Now, you will remember, friends, um, just a few weeks ago I had George Barna on. Uh, in fact, I did, I think, five interviews with George Barna, a fascinating man. He's really uh, a bit of an icon out there when it comes to statistical overviews of, of uh, what's happening with uh, the church in North America. Uh, and as he reminded us, uh, the Barna Group has done research for a lot of secular uh, corporations as well. But having written over 40 books, uh, he's been so high profile and has done a terrific job. Now, that's all he's doing is writing, pretty much. And he has moved on uh, in terms of everyday involvement with the Barna Group. And the new head of the Barna Group is just a young man by the name of David Kinneman, who has written this book, You Lost Me, Why Young Christians Are Leaving Church and Rethinking Faith. And David is, is, is with me. Welcome, David. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm very pleased to meet you because uh, I know your dad. And your dad uh, has had me speak a few times at, at his former church in Phoenix. And he's a terrific guy. He's one of my heroes. Well, I, I'm not surprised. He's, uh, um, I, I'm surprised he's retired. Now, he's not really retired. Yeah. But um, he's, he's so youthful and it has so much energy. I don't think pastors retire. No. You know, they just keep speaking on Sundays. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In one way or another, they just keep, just keep at it. But David, you've, you've written this fascinating book, You Lost Me. Now, it's not your first book, but it's, it's absolutely uh, fascinating. And as I, as I read it <coughs> cover to cover, I, I, mean, I highlighted a number of things that uh, just jumped out at me. And it's, I don't want to do a book review here. But uh, you're, you're analyzing uh, um, the current generation of young people. 18 to 29. 18 to 29. And before we get into some specifics, what in general are you discovering about that age group and faith and the church? Well, I mean, they're the most diverse generation. We saw that in the video this morning mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Sean Quigley. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're the most diverse generation in terms of ethnicity. They're the most diverse generation in terms of their sources of input from the internet and from other media. Uh, they're also the most diverse generation in terms of their religious perspectives. And in some ways they're very spiritually minded, but in some ways they're very, they're very secular minded. In fact, we might say that pop culture has become their religion. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus is getting lost in the data stream for this generation. And so there's all sorts of different distractions, different things that they're interested in, but a very diverse generation. This is what's making it very difficult for the church to reach them. Now, you talk about um, uh, this generation uh, in, in terms of three kind of handles. I mean, you know, when you're writing from a statistical base, you gotta make it accessible to yeah. the average person like me. But you talk, you talk about um, nomads, you talk about prodigals, and you talk about exiles. Right. What do you mean by those three categories? Well, we went into this research trying to understand why is that young people, as they come out of their teen years, seem to take so much of a break from church, even from faith. And so I went into this assuming that most people who walk away from the church, from faith, would, would you know, essentially lose their faith entirely. Uh, that there'd be one major story here. And in fact, there's three, these three journeys that you described. And so the, the nomad is someone who walks away from the church, but they still call themselves a Christian. Uh, this is the most common story for young people, uh, young Christians. Uh, four out of 10 young people go through this nomadic experience where they still say, I'm a Christian, uh, but they don't think of themselves as active churchgoers. Um, uh, the second journey is that of a prodigal, and this is a person who loses their faith entirely. About one in every 10 young people who are Christian background uh, go through this, this experience where they literally say, I'm no longer a, a, a Christian. Uh, it doesn't work for me. I, I don't want to be a part of that faith anymore. Uh, and it's a, very, it's a very painful process, of course, for mm. the families and for the, the, the people involved in ministry to those individuals. Uh, and then the final is a group we call exiles. And two out of 10 young people fit this category. And these are people who feel stuck between the comfortable world of faith and religion and the, their parents' faith and the culture and the world that they feel called to influence. And so we use the term exile like Daniel and Esther in the pages of scripture, uh, people who are sort of torn between two worlds, serving, serving God, being faithful, but also living in, in Babylon, living in a, a, a strange culture. In the world, but not of it. That's right. It's one of the main themes we talk about. Yeah, in, in but not of. Now, um, what, what are you discovering in your research in terms of reasons why? Is, is there a common theme why um, young people ha are becoming nomads, why they're becoming prodigals? Well, we go through the, the research and find that actually each person has a very specific story, and we really emphasize this idea that every story matters. So, you know, for your viewers who are parents, and your viewers who are, are Christian leaders, we recognize that each person has a very specific set of experiences and that part of our call is to actually do a better job of just listening to them and understanding what's, what's getting in the way of the work of the Lord in their lives. 
Um, but we also found in the research that there are six big reasons. The, the church is perceived to be overprotective. They think that their experience of church is shallow, that God's missing from church. Many young people tell us that uh, the church is anti-science or anti-intellectual, that they can't be a young scientist, a young medical student, uh, you know, a, an engineer, and also be faithful. Uh, they believe that the church is repressive sexually. Uh, they believe that uh, the, the church is exclusive. Again, we talked about the diversity of this generation, and so it, it feels as though they have to choose between their faith and their friends, so that's the exclusivity piece that, that is so, so troublesome for them. Uh, and they also say the church is doubtless, that it's, it's hard for them to express their deepest questions about life. And so each of those things, I mean, they're all challenging things that we need to sort of unpack and, and understand. We don't want to just take a poll or do research and then invent a religion to make, you know, make these young people sort of like, like us more. Uh, but I think we do have to recognize that some of these are very deep, personal, heartfelt reasons that, that young people have feel, felt disconnected from the church or from Christianity. Now, as I was reading the, the latter half of the book where you go into detail about these reasons why, um, the thing that kind of stuck out for me at least uh, as uh, maybe the most serious of those um, reasons why is uh, God absent from the church. I mean, kids, as, as children are very spiritual. And, and teenagers uh, have more than a vestigial interest in spiritual things from their childhood. Uh, they're not dumb. Uh, it brings up a big issue, and in, in, in it's something that I, I'm, I'm seeing wherever I go in the world as a, as a preacher myself. The lack of the transcendent, uh, the, la the, the lack of the holy. No, no, uh, very, very seldom am I, am I in a church setting where there's this powerful sense of the presence of God to the point where one one's spirit is stilled and, mm. and one daren't even open one's mouth because mm. the presence is there. Um, how, how does one recover that? Well, I mean, I think that's one of the huge uh, challenges and opportunities. I mean, in, in every challenge there's this huge opportunity and I think the research uncovers this huge opportunity that we have with this next generation because they, they are looking for deeper answers. They want to understand the truth about themselves, the truth about the world, the truth about culture, and then ultimately the truth about Jesus. And we talk about it, this in, in the concluding part of the book, as you say, uh, that one of the things we're really missing is giving people a sense of, of revelation, a, a sense that God is speaking to them through Scripture. This is a generation now that they're more active in church activities, they're more active in programs, they're one of the busiest generations uh, that we've ever seen in North America, uh, but they're, they're not they're, they're not actually experiencing God in church. They're not actually recognizing that Scripture has claim on their lives, that God literally speaks to us through the pages of Scripture. And so this is one of the challenges that we've introduced them to a Jesus of church, but not necessarily a Jesus of Scripture. We've, we've given them so much Christianity that they're bored, but not enough Jesus that they want more of Him. You know, as I'm reading your book, I'm thinking about my experience in Africa. Now, I just, I just did a conference a few months ago we're at 1,800 uh, young people in Malawi for three days. These kids had all asked permission from their schoolmasters to, to have three days off from school, which for an African kid is a huge sacrifice because mm -hmm. uh, school is everything to them. Uh, so they come, and there were so many of them, we had to sit under the trees instead of in the building that we had thought we would meet in. Uh, I, I, I don't see any of what we're talking about here there. And I, I'm trying to understand mm -hmm. why. Uh, and, you know, I'm not an, I'm not an analyst as you are. But in their case, uh, poverty is, uh, is everyone's common experience. Uh, they really live from day to day because they don't know that they'll have food tomorrow. Um, uh, life is hard, uh, and they have a profound sense of their need of the Holy Spirit in their life to deal with the darkness that surrounds mm. them. And it, it would be an interesting thing, I mean, probably far bigger than, than you could take on because of your responsibilities in America, but the interesting thing to analyze where young people are in other parts of the world. We're actually hoping to do more of that at Barna is to do more international research because we think the problems of North American Christianity such as they are, we're not going to solve them just by understanding us better. You know, it's, it's a lot of navel gazing as that phrase goes. Well, well, yeah, and you know, if you're going to the Southern Hemisphere where mm -hmm. the Pentecostals, for instance, and the Charismatics are huge, mm -hmm. you know, almost a billion now. 
um, and, and there's such a vital uh, participation of young people, it would be interesting to kind of look at the, the various regions of the world and, and, and try to come up with a kind of a universal view of what's going on with young people. Well, this is what's such a great opportunity with us, he, even here in North America with our young people, is again, they're very diverse. They actually expect to be able to be empowered and do things uh, you know, with the world. My daughter, Emily, who's 12, uh, we were watching some of the old reruns of Star Trek. And, and she said, you know, those are boring. What do they do, make these in their garage? Yeah. And, you know, they, they feel as though they can make better movies on their, you know, their Mac, on their, you know, PC. And, and so this is a generation that feels ready to change the world. Yeah. They don't want to be just hearers of faith. They want to be doers. Yeah. Have, uh, there's a lot of things we should be challenged by this generation, but we should also be very hopeful about this. Like, too. I'm really wondering if one of the reasons the church is losing kids is because the church is not challenging kids. That's right. Now, they're, they're trying to bring them in and satisfy their, you know, their entertainment needs. But it seems to me that a church that is sustainable with its young people is a church that sends them out. They want to be more challenged than we're willing to challenge them. Right. And I, I think that's the thing we're seeing about the most effective churches and, and really the most effective families and parents are those that actually say, we believe that you want to understand something about the, the deep truth of what God's created you to do. And we're going to challenge you to these sort of, this sort of life. And, and so we're seeing churches that are doing a great job of that. And the big challenge for them is to actually become uh, you, you know, places that are equipping these young people, that are training them, that are giving them the technological tools and the media tools, and most importantly, the theological foundation uh, to recognize that, you know, we need, we need young people who are willing and able to take Sabbath. Uh, we need young people who are willing and able to challenge the, their peers with the truth of the gospel. We need young people who are willing and able to live in the world, but not of the world, to be in media, but not of media, to be in science, but not of science. And so this is a huge opportunity for us. Uh, you know, I love this generation. I love young people. I love the church, and, and I want to see them together. Yeah.